This the net factor from abroad is it refers to the, the, the value of goods and services produced by the citizen of a particular country that resides in another country. By deducting that from the G N, I mean GDP, that's when we get our GNP, and that is the major difference from the two. That is, the net factor from abroad can be GNP minus GDP. The gross products, uh, the gross domestic products at a uh, factor cost also is the sum of total of the compensation of employees, operating surplus and missed income, held by the factors of production in an accounting year, plus depreciation or consumption of fixed uh, capital. The GDP or at factor cost can also be estimated by deducting the net indirect tax from gross domestic products at market price. Those are the uh, the key points and how to calculate the GNP, I mean GDP, both at market price and at factor cost. Now, another concept that is also very important is what we refer to as NNP, net national product. In the process of production of goods and services, there will be some depreciation of fixed capital, also called consumption of fixed capital, that will be taking place. If the value of depreciation is deducted from the value of gross national product in a year, then we arrive at the net national product. In other words, gross national product minus the value of depreciation will give us the value of net national product. That is the uh, net national product uh, uh, calculation and how to arrive at them. Therefore, national, national product Net national product at market price is gross national product at market price minus depreciation. Then we have net national product also at factor cost, which is equal to the sum of value added at factor cost or net domestic product at factor cost and net factor income from abroad. Don't forget the net factor income from abroad refers to the factor of I mean the value of goods and services produced by the citizens that reside in another country. Income earned by factors of production, though participation in the production process such as wages, salaries and rents and profit is also termed the national income. Those ones can also be referred to as the accumulation of the, uh, the income earned from the factors of production can be termed as net uh, national income as well. We also have net domestic product at market price, which is the market value of final goods and services produced by all the producers in the domestic territory of a particular country during an accounting year, exclusive of consumption of capital, I mean consumption of fixed capital, that is depreciation. That means to get our net national domestic product, we have to deduct the, the value of depreciation from the value of GDP, which is gross domestic product. From there, we arrive at our next net domestic product. It is equal to the net value added at market price. That is the product, I mean the calculation of net domestic product. Net domestic income or net domestic product at factor cost, which can be abbreviated as NDI, is the income generated in form of wages, rent, interest and profit in the domestic territory of a particular country by all the producers normal that is the normal resident and not the non the normal resident and non-resident of a particular country in a particular year and the, the the calculation of all this the income held from the factor of production which are wages rent interest and profit put together are uh, refers to as net domestic income but it must be those that are generated by the citizen of a particular country are not citizen but reside in that particular country over a year. That is how to get our NDI, net domestic income. The next, uh, the next sub concept is what we refer to as PI, personal income. As, as uh, familiar as it sounds, personal income measures the income received by individuals for productive activities that they are involved in. This includes all sources of income, such as pension, payment, 
welfare payment, employment, insurance, benefits, but exclude attributed to individuals in national income, but are not available for use. That is, there are some individual national income benefits that are not available for use at the moment. Those ones are excluded. But other sources of income to a person, regardless of status, such are reversed to as the personal income. The latter includes undistributed profits of incorporated firms, employers' contribution, and so on. Those ones are not uh, uh, are a part of the national, I mean, personal income. Then the, 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 the way to calculate the personal income is by adding the national income plus the transfer payment from government minus corporate retained profits and corporate income tax and employment tax. All, these are, all those tax are excluded, but other payments which serve as income are excluded. And the last one is what we refer to as disposable income. Disposable income is defined as the income remaining with individuals after deducting all form of taxes levied against their income and their properties by the government. That is, all form of taxes and other levies against uh, uh, an individual by the government must be removed from the uh, an individual's income. The remaining one are what we refer to as disposable income. Those are the ones that are left for the consumer to decide how to spend them and have the total right on how to distribute the spending. Therefore, disposable income refers to the income actually received by the household from all sources. The individual can dispose this income according to his wish or according to his own uh, desire as it is derived after deducting the direct taxes and all other forms of uh, income. Those are the real, uh, the, the common uh, concept of other national income. But the additional one that we can also have is what we refer to as real income. Though it may not sound familiar, but in economics we try to get the, the actual fact of what we can refer to as our income. Sometimes the, the money income may look uh, big, may look so uh, high, but the real income may look small. What do we mean? When we talk of real income, real income refers to the goods and services produced in terms of money at current price that will not exceed uh, that will not express or indicate the real state as it's supposed to. Hence, real income is the national income expressed in terms of the general level of price of a particular year, considered as the base year. That is, there are some income that we need to really get right, do so much that the money value will not be like a deception. In the case whereby, for example, in the case whereby the general price level of that particular country is high. We should not consider the high income value of an individual as its real income. The real income can be de derived by calculating how much of goods and services can that money income that looks high purchase. And in the case where the general price level is high, therefore the real income of such uh, individuals in that country will be low because the general price level is high and it, the real money income will not be able to purchase or acquire much of the goods and services that are available in the market. But if the general price level is low, then the real income will be high. Let's assume, for example, someone that his money income is 10,000 naira. And with that 10,000 naira, the goods and services that such a person can afford with that 10,000 naira because of the general price level of the country that is high is not much. The little amount of goods and services that such a person can consume, I mean, can generate, can uh, buy with that money income is what we refer to as the real income. Also, we have what we call per capita income. Per capita income is derived by dividing the national income of that particular country from the population of the country, by the population of the country. That is defining the total national income by the population of that one. That means the per capita uh, income, which is referred to as BCI, is equal to national income divided by the total population. What that one is really talking about is that we want to know how much of that 
particular national income will be uh, directly or indirectly attributed or attached to one individual, to each individual, to all the population at large. So therefore, if the national income of that particular country per year is equal to 1,000 Naira, and the population of that particular country are going to be 500. That means we have to define that 1,000 Naira as national income by the population, which will give us the total amount that should be, uh, that should be uh, attributed, that should be attached to an individual directly or indirectly in that particular country. And the higher the uh, per capita income, the higher the standard of living of that particular country will be. And the lower the national, I mean the per capita income, the lower the uh, standard of living in that particular country. Now, what are the determinants of national income? One, we have the availability of natural resources. If there are natural resources in a particular country, then there is possibility for the national income of that particular country to be high because of the benefit of the national resources. Two, level of technology. The higher the level of technology of a particular country, the higher ten the tendency of that particular country's national income to be high. That is another one. Three, we have industrial development. If there, if there is a, a, a good uh, standardized uh, industrial development in that uh, particular country, the national income is likely to be high. Also, the number of working population, the working population of a particular country. If the working population, the working population are usually referred to as the independent population, and why the the uh, the retired and the the infant 